Well, two challenging issues there, monitoring protection and monitoring where there's no access. I think I have to agree with Nora. It, it is possible, but it's about, it's about the how. So it is possible, but it's also very important because we know um, where people most need protection is usually where we, certainly as international agencies, don't have the access. Um, there, I think there are a number of um, approaches that are particularly challenging. So where there's no access, for example, some of the activities that people might use, um, an organization like Oxfam certainly is advocacy, which presents its own challenges in trying to look at the impact of that. And where there's no access, there may be no media access, there may be very little public awareness of what is happening, not in every case. And then there may, there may be organizations looking at protection outcomes who are trying to raise the profile of a situation to galvanize some more political action that will bring about greater protection. So that in itself is challenging. Um, we have had some experience within Oxfam of trying to evaluate advocacy work or look at the impact of advocacy work after action reviews. We've also actually had ODI do a, a number of pieces of work for us looking at that. Um, I think one thing that's important to talk about is who doesn't have access. So is this international staff or some nationalities of staff, some national staff, partners, community leaders, are other private companies operating there that we could work with? Um, we actually in Oxfam have some sort of emerging guidelines on uh, monitoring and evaluation in limited access environments, drawing on some of our, our learning and experience. And what we've come, what we've found in terms of general trends is that you need to really build a whole wide range of relationships with lots of different people, lots of different actors that can help you monitor um, the impact of, of what you're doing or at least the out outcomes, outputs of what you're doing. Um, really build trust in those relationships and have a diverse set of relationships, developing tools jointly, some of these practical things really looking at risk, um, perhaps using technology, but um, we know, uh, I mean, Nora's mentioned Edward Snowden, we know there are downsides to technology and I think it's best to work on the assumption that it is being monitored. Um, we've placed a lot more emphasis on things like triangulation, cross-checking, weighting of different sources, looking at probability and having um, perhaps a higher tolerance of unknowns and, and errors. I think one of the things our experience has shown is that that's quite a hard sell to donors as well. Mm -hmm. So whereas we have on one side this um, sort of more push towards <coughs> being results-based, those kind of environments can be very challenging. So it is possible, um, but lots of adaptations and a lot of creativity needed. Mm. Thank you, Rachel. No, that's interesting. It might be interesting later to, to hear from, uh, if there are any donors in the room, to hear about their perspectives on that particular issue. 